build a GUI calculator with PyQt and Python. Even though web and mobile applications appear to have taken over the software development market, there's still demand for traditional graphical user interface desktop applications. If you're interested in building these kinds of applications in Python, then you'll find a wide variety of libraries to choose from, including TKinter, WXPython, PyQt, PySide, and others. In this course, you'll learn the basics of building GUI desktop applications with Python and PyQt. You'll learn how to create graphical interfaces with Python and PyQt, connect the user's events on the app's GUI with the app's logic, organize a PyQt app using a proper project layout, and create a fully functional GUI application with PyQt. In this course, you'll create a calculator app. This project will help you grasp the fundamentals and get you up and running with this GUI library. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Getting to know PyQt. PyQt is a Python binding for Qt, which is a set of C++ libraries and development tools providing platform independent abstractions for graphical user interfaces, known as GUIs. Qt also provides tools for networking, threads, regular expressions, SQL databases, SVG, OpenGL, XML, and many other powerful features. In this course, you'll be using PyQt 6, as this is the current version of the library. So any reference to PyQt is a reference to PyQt 6. PyQt is based on Qt version 6. So it provides classes for the many technologies which are available in Qt. PyQt 6 implements bindings for many of the Qt classes in a set of Python modules, which are organized in a top-level Python package called PyQt 6. For the current version of PyQt 6 to work, you'll need Python 3.8 or later. PyQt 6 is compatible with Windows, Unix, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. This is an attractive feature if you're looking for a GUI framework to develop multi-platform applications that have a native look and feel on each platform. It's available under two licenses, the Riverbank Commercial License and the General Public License version 3. Your PyQ6 license must be compatible with your Qt license. If you use the GPL license, then your code must also use a GPL compatible license. If you want to use PyQt 6 to create a commercial application, then you need a commercial license for your installation. Note that the Qt company has developed and currently maintains its own Python binding for the Qt library. This is called Qt for Python and is the official Qt for Python. Its Python package is called PySide. PyQt and PySide are both built on top of Qt. The APIs are quite similar because they reflect the Qt API. Porting PyQ code to PySide can be as simple as updating some imports. If you learn one of them, then you should be able to work with the other with minimal effort. If you want to dive deeper into the differences between these two libraries, then check out the link seen on screen. And if you need more information about PyQ6 licensing, then check out this link on the project's official documentation. As you progress throughout this course, you'll notice that PyQt's API doesn't follow PEP8 coding style and naming conventions. PyQt is built around Qt, which is written in C++ and therefore uses the camel case naming style for functions, methods, and variables. When you start writing a PyQt project, you'll need to decide which naming style you'll use. On screen, you can see what PEP8 has to say about this. And in addition, the Zen of Python says that practicality beats purity. If you want to write consistent PyQt related code, then you should stick to the framework's coding style. So in this course, that's what you'll be following by using camel case instead of the usual Python snake case. So with that information out of the way, in the next section of the course, you'll take a look at installing PyQt. Installing PyQt. You have several options for installing PyQt on your system or development environment. Most of the time, you should create a Python virtual environment to install PyQt 6 in an isolated way. On screen, you can see the commands to create a virtual environment and install PyQt 6, 
Firstly, on Linux and Mac OS. And secondly, on Windows. In both these cases, you first create a virtual environment using the VM module from the standard library. It's then activated, and finally, PyQt6 is installed using pip. Note that you'll need Python 3.8 or later for PyQt6 to install. It is possible to install PyQt6 directly into your system Python environment with the command you saw earlier, but without a virtual environment active. While this is a fast way to install PyQt6 and start using it right away, it's not the recommended approach. Generally, you should use a Python virtual environment as seen previously. Several Linux distributions include binary packages for PyQt6 in their repositories. If this applies to you, then you can install the library using the Distributions Package Manager. On screen, you can see the command you'd need for Ubuntu. Here, you'll install PyQt6 and its dependencies into the base system, so you can use the library in any of your GUI projects. Note that root privileges are needed, which you invoke with the sudo command. If you're a macOS user, then you can install PyQt6 using the Homebrew Package Manager. To do this, open a terminal and enter the command seen on screen. After running this, you'll have PyQt6 installed on your homebrew Python environment and it will be ready to use. Note that typically the versions installed by package managers may not be the latest version of PyQt6. A pip installation will be better if you want to ensure that you have the latest release. Another installation option is to build PyQt from source. This can be a bit complicated, so you may want to avoid it if possible. But if you really do need to build it from source, then check out the library's documentation recommendations at the link seen on screen. So now that you have PyQt6 installed, in the next section of the course, you'll be creating your first PyQt application. Creating your first PyQt application. Now that you have a working PyQt installation, you're ready to create your first GUI app you'll create a Hello World application with Python and PyQt. Here are the steps that you'll follow. Import Qt application and all the required widgets from PyQt6 Qt widgets. Create an instance of Qt application. Create the application's GUI. Show the application's GUI. And run the application's event loop or main loop. To kick things off, Start by creating a new file called hello.py in your current working directory. First, you import sys, which will allow you to handle the application's termination and exit status through the exit function. Next, you import qapplication, qlabel, and qwidget from qt widgets, which is part of the pyqt6 package. You've now imported everything you'll need. Next, you create an instance of qapplication. Do this as you would create an instance of any Python class. You should create your app instance before you create any GUI object in PyQt. Internally, the Qt application class deals with command line arguments. That's why you need to pass in a list of command line arguments to the class constructor. In this example, you use an empty list because your app won't be handling any command line arguments. You'll often find that developers pass sys argv to the constructor of Qt application. This object contains the list of command line arguments passed into a Python script. If your application needs to accept command line arguments, then you should use this to handle them. But otherwise, just use an empty list as you've seen. Next, you'll create the application's GUI. Here, the GUI will be based on the QWidget class, which is the base class of all user interface objects in PyQt. 
In this code, Window is an instance of QWidget, which provides all the features that you'll need to create the application's window or form. As the name suggests, Set Window Title sets the window's title in your application. Here, the window will show PyQt app as its title. You can use Set Geometry to define the window's size and screen position. The first two arguments are the X and Y screen coordinates where the window will be placed, starting from the top left of the screen. The third and fourth arguments are the window's width and height. Every GUI application needs widgets or graphical components. In this example, you'll use a QLabel widget, Hello Message, to show the message Hello World on your application's window. QLabel objects can display HTML formatted text, so here the text is formatted as an H1 header to make it larger on screen. Finally, you use Move to place Hello Message at the coordinates 6015 on the application's window. In PyQt, you can use any widget, a subclass of QWidget, as a top level window. The only condition is that the target widget must not have a parent widget. When you use a widget as your top level window, PyQt automatically provides it with a title bar and turns it into a normal window. The parent child relationship between widgets has two complementary purposes. A widget with no parent is considered a main or top level window. In contrast, a widget with an explicit parent is a child widget and is shown within its parent. This relationship is also known as ownership, with parents owning their children. The PyQt ownership model ensures that if you delete a parent widget, such as the top level window, then all of the child widgets will automatically be deleted as well. To avoid memory leaks, you should always make sure that any QWidget object has a parent, with the sole exception of the top level windows. Now you can continue with the code and get the PyQt GUI application ready to run. You call show on window. This schedules a paint event, which is a request to paint the widgets that compose a GUI. This event is then added to the application's event queue. You'll learn more about PyQt's event loop later on in the course. Finally, you start the application's event loop by calling exec. The call to exec is wrapped in a call to sysexit, which allows you to cleanly exit Python and release memory resources when the application terminates. You can run your first PyQt app as you would any other Python script. You should see a window that will look similar to the one on screen depending on your operating system and appearance settings. The application shows a window based on QWidget. The window displays the Hello World message, and to show the message it uses a QLabel widget. And with that, you've written your first GUI desktop application using PyQt and Python. You can close it in the normal way with the close button for the window on your operating system. So now that you've written your first GUI application, in the next section you'll look at the basics of Qt so you can understand how to create fully featured applications.